And that's a big challenge. You know, how do you dimensionalize two dimensional characters? You know, and that's partly about the brilliance of the writing. It's partly about casting it well, making sure that you have actors who, you know, who feel warm hearted, open hearted, um, and who you believe and who you fall in love with. Mark, I'm very excited to talk with you. You are a TV legend. Uh, you've worked on some of my favorite shows, especially Hannibal. I adore that show still to this day. Yeah, wow. Um, what a show, huh? What a show on network television, NBC. I know. it's It was amazing what they got away with at that time. Uh, and I'm, yes. I still have, still have my fingers crossed they'll get to come back one day. Um, so... What, how did you, I, I, I'm almost done with one piece, by the way, I got through, I'm halfway through the finale uh, and it's a very energetic and joyous ride. How did they, you know, approach you to be a part of the team and, and what about the project really sparked your interest to want to be a part of it? I had a good and very fruitful relationship with Netflix for many years now um, from, from the early, early days when really they only had House of Cards and Dead Um so in those early days of Daredevil, where we where we were doing some really crazy stuff and really trying out stuff, and and they were unbelievably supportive of, of everything that we we wanted to do and try out, um, you know, such that you know the, the crazy stairwell sequence that we shot for Daredevil, you know, in, in the, the single shot, so called single shot stairwell sequence, you know, was an insane thing to try, but they were behind me one hundred percent of the way, um, and so when. And then, of course, I did Luke Cage and The Punisher and then um, came in to help, you know, bring The Witcher to fruition. And then when One Piece came, um, I think they were just intrigued to see what I wanted to do with it. And I read the scripts and the scripts were so fully formed and they were so full of joy and sunshine and positivity and optimism, which of course is an absolutely wonderful translation of what the manga is. And so at that time, I seemed to be sent, being sent an awful lot of apocalyptic scripts and the world seemed to be quite a dark place. So when you then are presented with, a, with, a, with a, an IP, which is essentially just full of sunshine um, and positivity, I just thought, this is what we need right now. And I, I want I want to give it a go. And of course, it had huge amounts of drama, which is something that I come from, from, from being a theatre director for many years and then, you know, working in some very intense human dramas in, in the UK and Europe. And then and then the action, which felt different to the Marvel action and felt different to the action that we'd been shooting in The Witcher. And so that was really exciting for me to think about how can we how can we evolve action into something slightly different, slightly more one piecey. What what is it that will will identify it as being one piece? I love that the action mixes the fantastical elements of its world with a very grounded handheld combat. It's it's awesome. Um so you mentioned the manga. Uh obviously the anime's been on for forever. Uh, um, were yeah. you were you familiar with either prior to you know get you know being approached for the show, or did you dive in once they did approach you for it? I dived in, man. I dived in. You know, um, you read those scripts and then you think, oh wow, you know, wow, this is this is live action. So you go back to the manga and you look at the crazy stuff that goes on in the manga, the origination of it, and then you look at the anime and you think, wow, this is even more crazy. Um, and yet we've got to somehow translate this into live action um, where you are limited by your own physicality to a degree. I mean, you know, the, the characters have, have super skills, of course. But if you just try to replicate the 2D into uh, human dimensions, it, it, it struggles. So it felt to me that what Steve Mayada, the showrunner, and Matt Owens, the joint show, showrunner, had done so well is that they grounded it in something human. And our biggest wish was to say, let's create something which is not the manga, it's not the anime, it's its own thing. And if you love One Piece, you've got all these things to choose from. So it's not trying to um, 
take it over. It's trying to sit amongst it to complement it. You have these three different things to enjoy one piece with. And, and that's a big challenge. You know, how do you dimensionalize two dimensional characters? You know, and that's partly about the brilliance of the writing. It's partly about casting it well, making sure that you have actors who, you know, who feel warm hearted, open hearted, um, and who you believe and who you fall in love with. So since you mentioned the casting, I am curious uh, with whenever directors come on for a show or they, you know, they help start off a show. How involved in the casting process are you uh, for a show like this? where obviously the creators have someone in mind, but then you are having to then, you know, fill out the roster. I come from theatre. So, so I, I think my, my work with, my, with actors is, is very important to how I shoot action shows. Um, and I think that's perhaps one of the reasons why Marvel and I have enjoyed such a kind of fruitful relationship is because, um, you, you know, you, 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 can, you, can, you can take two-dimensional characters and make them feel real. So... Um, we we worked together on the cast unquestionably from day one. As soon as I was brought on board this show, we said we need to cast this, start casting it now. Firstly, because we wanted a global cast. So that's, you know, a lot of people to see. We saw thousands of people. Second of all, um, we wanted actors that had heart, um, that had warmth and that we could build together that we feel there was going to be some kind of chemistry because that's magic. That's not something that, you know, no matter how good the scripts are, doesn't matter how good the sets are, no matter how good a director I am. If you, if you haven't got that, you can't create it, you know, and one piece will live and die on how the audience fall in love with these characters. And so we, we, we started that process really, really early on. And as a director, I, I, I like to, give my actors quite a bit of audition time. So I don't just get them to come in and read a piece and then say, thanks very much, we'll get back to you. I like to work them through scenes, work them quite hard. So we tend to do anything between 20 minute and 30 minute auditions. Um, so that, that casting process was, and then in a, on top of that, I wanted physical actors. I wanted actors who could act, hold drama, emotional scenes, but also who could carry some of the action because the way that I, shoot drama uh, action and the way that I wanted to shoot action for one piece in particular was in long, big, long flowing shots that followed them through from one sequence to the next and then picked up another actor and all the rest of it. Now, if you're constantly having to replace the actor with stunt doubles, you can't do that. And that's something that I learned on The Witcher when I was working with, with Henry Cavill. Well, I love that you took the extra steps because, I mean, the cast are just incredible across the board in this show. Uh, Thank I did- you. I did truly fall in love with them. Was there any one character that you found the hardest uh, to really find the right person for? You know, Luffy is the hardest character to cast because he carries the whole show. And he is the drive of positivity. And he is, he believes, he believes in having dreams. He believes in believing in yourself. He inspires people to be themselves, to be more of themselves. He wants to help them become more of themselves. And it's it's not that when when Kiki came in, Inyaki came in, we knew. We just knew, partly because he made us all laugh in his audition. He did something crazy and off script, very deliberately. And it was like, oh, okay. Okay, he's got some cheek and some charm and some chutzpah to him, you know. And that's kind of Luffy, you know. And the reason why I say he's the hardest to cast is because he could, that positivity can get quite irritating in film. And he never did. I don't, I don't feel. He, he just emanated warmth and goodwill. No, he nailed that part of of Monkey uh, in terms of the the positivity. He I never found him grating, so uh, I love it. Oh, that's um, so good. And uh, in addition to him, though, Emily Rudd is uh, incredible as Nami, and she has been so passionate about how much of a fan she already was, you know, well before uh, being cast in this show. And I'm curious, you know, were 
what was that like having those conversations with that, with her working with her, you know, did she bring anything from her own fandom to the role or to the scripts that maybe wasn't already there from Maeda and Owen's work? Emily works in the moment. So she, I never felt like she was bringing baggage into the room. I only ever felt that she was always responding in the moment. And that is the greatest gift you can have as a director is when you have an actor who, who steps into a scene with another actor and listens and responds, but doesn't say, well, I don't think, you know, Luffy would do that or Sanji would do that. You know, they're just in the moment and responding to it. So I never, if, if she, if in her preparation for the scenes that she was doing, if she was bringing her knowledge into her prep, I never felt like it got in the way of what we were doing on the floor. That's, I mean, that's a great collaborative experience then. Yes. And, and, you know, and, you know, you know, sort of working with Henry Cavill on the witch, you know, Henry's a huge fan of the witcher. He's a big game player and all the rest of you. And the, the great actors just let it inform their performance. They don't let it dominate their performance. Well, she does well then to, she, she really found the right balance there. Uh, and oh, thank uh, you. Guys. She'll be thrilled to hear that. I, you know, I, I hope she gets all the, the love she deserves for her, her work in this show. She, everybody, uh, of course, but and, her. And you know, you know, you know, Grant, sorry to cut across you there. There's a slight time delay. The, the other, the other lovely thing about Emily is she's beautiful, obviously. And Nami is a beautiful character, but she has so much depth to her being and we were really keen that all our actors weren't just beautiful we weren't really after that we were after beautiful spirits again it's the thing that you you can't you can't create on the screen the screen knows when it's there the film the film will 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 find it in you if it's there and with all these actors all the actors that we cast i feel they have that extra element. And with Nami, it was really important again that you you cast somebody who has depth to them somewhere in their in their soul in order for the character not just to be two dimensions. It worked wonderfully, uh, truly. I, I'm not trying to blow Thank smoke you. with with uh compliments of this entire interview, but I do mean it. I um, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, so in talking about collaborative experiences and, and wanting to stay true to the source material, I know Aichiro Oda was uh, very, you know, hands on with a lot of the show. And I'm curious what your experience was like working with him and, you know, ensuring that you stayed truthful to the to his source material. He's the source. I mean, you know, why would you not go to the font? You know, it's he, he is the font and he knows. And you, you know, he has created something that the world or the world of One Piece adores. I, I, I think it would be an insanity not to include him in every single decision that you make and make sure that we are being truthful and honoring what it is that he's doing. Again, you know, there is a translation from the manga to live action. Adaptations need to be made. And that's okay. And he was always very open to understanding that you have to make some changes in order to make that transition. So long as you were staying true and honoring the spirit of what his wonderful creation is. And so as a, as a guiding hand over this whole show, he was, you know, a fantastic collaborator. Absolutely. He wanted us to get it right. And we wanted, we wanted to get it right for him. Well, I'm glad you had that relationship with him. Uh, as someone who has not uh, dove into the source material, watching the show definitely has made me interested. So uh, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Oh my so, god, Grant! Sign your life away, man. <laughs> There's 22 years of it. Yeah. Right. All right. I got to get going on it. Uh, <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> um, now, for my final few questions, I actually did want to look away from One Piece in particular. We've talked uh, about a few of your different shows, and I wanted to look at them. 
uh, The Witcher in particular, you know, you you worked with with Henry Cavill a lot on that show, like you were just talking about, and his time on the show has now come to an end. What was it like when you heard that news and and you you know learned of the direct the new direction they'd be going with the show? Look, you know, Henry has done three series. Um, you, you know, th- these are these are demanding shows to make. You know, they are huge, and Henry does every single beat of his stunts. He won't even allow a hand. If you're doing a close-up of a hand grabbing a sword, it has to be his hand. So normally what you do is you bring in a double. You know, the you know, Henry will go off and shoot some other scene in which he's in somewhere else, and you get somebody else in to do the hand so that you don't have to bother your your number one. You know, Henry, Henry won't do that. And um you know, as a result of that, you know, the, the results are extraordinary. You know, you, you're, you're working with an incredible athlete, first and foremost, who, who works out hours before and hours after you've been shooting for 12 hours um, and who cares deeply, deeply about the work that he does. And so doing three seasons, you know, in the first season, I came in on the first season, we were shooting in, you know, I don't know, four different countries. That's taking the whole entourage in different places learning the stunts rehearsing the stunts and you know when we were shooting the sword fight for example in the pilot you know that's a big one shot sequence which if and and, and they're and they're heavy swords they're not sharp but they're heavy so if you get them wrong you seriously damage somebody so you know we had a uh, a camera operator come into the the show and and i think he I think he was rehearsing that fight sequence for four weeks, maybe just the camera operator working, learning the dance of the fight so that he can make sure the camera is in the right place in order to land the hit without having to make it cut. Um, and then of course, moving into the second part of that sword fight, which is Renfrey, where we stop the fight from time to time to get the eye contact between the two of them to get the sense of, are they going to kiss or are they going to kill? Um, that's draining on your number one. So after three series, you know, I feel, I feel, okay, he's brought this show into being. And if he feels like he's done what he can, I trust him. It sounds like quite the tasking uh, job. I mean, he already made it sound plenty tasking with a lot of the interviews and behind the scenes footage you'd see. But yes, with that in mind, I'm sure it's, it's totally. But you know under- what, that, 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 that focus that he has and that desire to get it right is a gift to work with because it elevates everybody to say good enough isn't good enough it's got to be fantastic and that's you know we all want to we want to work like that we all want to make something we don't want to make something that's good we want to make something incredible well, you guys did a phenomenal job throughout that show's run. Uh, I have yet to catch up with season three, admittedly, but uh, I'm hesitant because I'm just, I know I'm going to get emotional seeing Cavill leave, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll yeah. have to do it because I got to know. Um, we also, but you know, if you, if you, if you weren't feeling the joy, you wouldn't be feeling the pain, man. This is true. This is very true. So there, the, you got to take the lows with the highs. Um yeah. So earlier you did talk about uh, you reflected on your time with Daredevil and Luke Cage and Punisher. And uh, I'm as a fan of the Netflix universe. I'm so excited that Marvel is finally bringing those characters back over at Disney Plus. You know, Daredevil's getting his own show. Uh, Punisher is going to be a part of that. Still no word on Luke Cage. I'm hoping him of everybody comes back. But what is that like for you? You know, finally getting to see some of these characters that you helped bring to life for this new generation, uh, getting to return to screen. They are just such great. I mean, apart from the the the, the, the stories that it enables us to tell, um, that seem to resonate with an audience. You know, I mean, that's the the best superhero stories are all allegorical. You know, you have a fantastic amount of fun with them, but in the end, they do reflect something of our world. And, and and who we are, who we would like to become. Um, and so to be able to tell more of those stories and to be able to pull them from the Marvel Universe and create new stuff, we hadn't finished. None of us, we all knew we hadn't finished. We all felt, ah, oh, oh, but there's more to do here um, for all those characters, you know. And, and for the actors who, you know, who I've worked so closely with, on those shows 
Oh, you know, I mean, they just, they are just inspirational people to work with. So, you know, to, for them to get the chance to kind of slip into those um, clothes again uh, and for the, the lucky people who are able to kind of work with them, um, you know, God bless them. I say. I know I'm in particular excited to see more of Charlie Cox uh, as Daredevil. He has just killed it uh, since day well, one. Well, he's another one like he's another he's another one like like Henry Cavill. You know, Henry is an incredible swordsman in in, in in his own right. Charlie is an unbelievable physical athlete. You know what what he <laughs> we were shooting the scene uh, in I think it's the first episode of season three and. He, he was he was he'd, he'd been in some terrible situation and uh, he oh yes that's right the, the building had collapsed on him and he'd escaped through it and all and he was kind of recovering in the kind of the, in the chapel of this church and uh, so we in part of that recovery process you know he was doing a series of exercises to bring himself back to himself and we were doing these sort of things and he said no no no, no this is what I'm going to do I'm going to do a handstand and I'm going to do press ups on a handstand. I don't know if you've ever tried that, Grant, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's, <laughs> for the likes of you and me, it's just not wise unless you've really done some training. He just got up and he just did it. It was like, what? Wow. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it goes to show how good then he is at those fight scenes or how how, yeah. how capable he is for those fight scenes. Uh, that's yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, now, have you had any talks with Marvel or, or have any hopes of, of getting to dive back into that world, whether it be Daredevil, Luke Cage, whoever to, you know, get to explore more of those superhero stories. You know, Grant, I, I, I've been so, you know, fully busy with one piece. It is, you know, it's a really incredibly absorbing show to make, particularly to lead in terms of its, you know, visual direction and, and, and all the rest of it. Um, it has such a, huge amount of cgi to do and sound and composition and uh, and all the rest of it i've been so fully on that that i haven't really had the chance to kind of reach out and see um well they would reach out to me anyway well who am i you know <laughs> <laughs> oh hello <laughs> um so no we haven't we haven't had any conversations about that yet well i'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you then that either you get those talks or that netflix comes right back and says all right season two let's get on it for one piece because uh i I'm, think i'm always on the end of the phone I'm always on I the end think, of the phone. Yeah, there's plenty. I mean, as we both know, there are plenty of directions for this show to go in the future. Sure. Uh, but in the meantime, sure. I look forward to spreading the word about this season. And uh, I truly thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time. Uh, I, I've loved talking with you. Hey, Grant, great pleasure. Anytime, man. Thank you. Thank you for watching, too. Thank you for your interest.